Newport News Public Schools, helping families get ready for virtual learning by handing out laptops. In April, Bloomfield Hills ordered 2,000 Chromebooks. 2,500 Chromebooks. The school division is issuing close to 20,000 laptops. The Rochester Community School District ordered 11,000 in May. They unloaded and prepared nearly 7,000 laptops for students. Now the question is... What are students supposed to do with their laptops? Are they supposed to just look at them and shape them around and think they're all pretty and stuff? We talked with Mr. Terry about this in order to find out more about what is allowed and disallowed by the school system itself. Can y'all stop fucking playing games on your laptop? We don't ordinarily permit that. Recently more than ever, with advancements in technology and sickness, education has made a real step forward by many schools lending computers for their students to use and hold on to through their time in school. However, the only thing students don't want to do in school is school. So they pass their time through laptop games. Hey, we about to play some cool math games. Uh, oh, oh. Ah, that's okay, we can just play some Stick Wars, let's go! Oh, no Flash. I, f I forgot Flash was dead. Ah, never mind that. The educational system will never think of this trick. Fuck, I'm about to complain on Reddit, bro. I I'm just shocked. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 5 games you play during class. Let's begin. Okay, so number five, Retro Bowl. Retro Bowl is an 8-bit styled American football game similar to Madden, but a lot more unique. The only drawback being that it's mainly a mobile game, meaning it's mind-numbingly repetitive and easy. But as a game to just quickly waste time, this does a very good job. Number four, Tetris. Now, if we're talking about retro, then Tetris is actually the game. This classic game has literally infinite versions online that can be played during a test. But frankly, there's nothing too special here. Let's be honest, it's fucking Tetris. Shit's older than my grandma's farts. And it pisses me off when I see people play it very poorly. Like, why would you do that? Number three, Slope. Okay, so I was kind of trolling for the first two, but this game is an absolute banger. In Slope, you play in this vaporwave-esque dimension as this green cybernetic ball rolling down infinitely, dodging obstacles and jumping insane distances, racking up points after every hurdle. And holy guac, this shit pops. The mechanics are so simple yet addicting. You start slow as hell, and then you hit that initial boost pad, and then you go... <laughs> Good game. Number two, Fortnite. <laughs> I'm not even joking. This is literally a website where you can play Fortnite unblocked, no flash, no controller, no teachers on your school laptop. And it doesn't even have to just be Fortnite. It's called play slash geforcenow.com. However, the only drawback is that most of the time you can't play it on your school Wi-Fi. So you probably have to use like your phone hotspot or you can play some angry bots, which is a far better third person shooter. Number, no, honorable mentions, Google Games. It's not an actual website, so I didn't put it on this list. But in my opinion, Solitaire is decent, Pac-Man sucks, Minesweeper is fun, Why is there a fucking dreidel, and Snake is a flawless game. Number one, Scratch Games. Oh shit, I'm pulling out the big guns. Designed as a platform for aspiring game designers learning code to make simple games as practice and sharing with the public, this website goes beyond just playing games. But for a student that's trying to waste time, this is kind of like the deformed cousin of cool math games because you can't have access to cool math games. I mean, check these games out. Tell me you don't want to play these. And this website's cool because you can literally look up anything and find that anything. Like, I could literally play Friday Night Funkin' because Newgrounds is freaking blocked. Obviously. You see, that was so good quality, I forgot I was playing the Scratch version. That's why I died. Anyways, some of my actual favorite games on Scratch is the Scratch version of Getting Over It, where you play a Scratch Cat instead of the Pot Guy. It gets difficult at times, but it's not too challenging, and overall it's pretty fun. Then you have another game that's like the worst looking version of Slope, but it doesn't play worse, it's, it's quite smooth and it's decent in quality of gameplay. And then you got the cream of the crop, the dream of the notch, 2D Minecraft. Do I have to say any more?